Hey guys, it's Jamie, the running realtor. Your Florida realtor. I specialize in running a search for the best deal and the right home for you. Running for you from Orlando. All the way to the horse capital country of the world, Ocala, Florida. You go all the way to the Buccaneer Stadium in Tampa? You got it. To Daytona International Speedway and the world's most famous beach. Okay, so you are, what was it again? I'm Helen Hamilton. Hamilton. I'm the magnet facilitator for our program here, and okay. we are an International Baccalaureate Middle Years program. Okay, and what does that mean? So you think International Baccalaureate, you think high school. You think I'm getting an International Baccalaureate, oh. an IB oh, diploma. Wow. No, we are the Middle Years version. So okay. we work with students in years six to eight, working on that well-balanced curriculum mm -hmm. that could take them to a diploma program if they want to. We mm -hmm. have a wonderful high school that we matriculate to for a diploma program. So or, you can speed that high school? Mm -hmm. I need to go to that high school next then. Oh, awesome. I would highly recommend it. Vanguard has an amazing program. Okay. Um, we also feed to many of the other schools in Marion County because our students leave us so well-rounded. Okay. So when I say well-rounded, we here as part of our philosophy believe that all students deserve not only the four core classes, so language arts, math, social studies, and science, mm -hmm. but also to leave us well-rounded citizens of the world. Yeah. So they're gonna take a language acquisition class, which here on campus is Spanish. Mm -hmm. They're gonna take PE. They're gonna take an art, and that's where we can have a lot of fun, yeah. and they're gonna take a design. So okay. design is typically a little bit more problem-solving, career-oriented focus. Mm. Um, our arts is one of our areas of highlight because we have the best arts program in Marion County. Okay. I would probably put it up against almost anyone in this central Florida. Um, so we offer band at all four levels, as well as a jazz band. Mm -hmm. We have guitar, we have chorus, we have drama, Ooh. and then we have our visual arts. And okay. visual arts kind of dives into both 2D and 3D visual arts. Interesting. So, so also keeping up with like the times. You know? Oh yeah. Everything oh yeah. Everything is uh, digital and... And that's, yep, and on our design side, we dig into, that's where our digital arts reside, although it actually kind of crosses boundaries because you're working with solving problems, you're working with finding solutions, but you're also utilizing the aesthetics and the principles of art and design. Interesting. So, Very cool. But yeah, so every student who comes to Howard is going to get that experience. Um, but we also have some really great academics. So yeah. when I say academics, those are our core classes, language arts, math, social studies, science, everyone has to take them. Mm -hmm. We just do the best. Definitely, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and you better say that. <laughs> oh, of course, that's why I work here. But I would not be amiss to say that because we have um, probably one of the top-notch programs. Um, just about two years ago, out of the National Merit Scholars, there were 13 in Marion County. Wow. 11 of them came through Howard. Interesting. So we Very prepare cool. our learners for success. Yes, at Vanguard in the BP program, the diploma program, but also they go out to Westport for their arts program. They go out to Forest for their AP program, mm -hmm. and they leave us ready to go wherever. I didn't do a count this year yet of our valid Victorians, but I'm pretty sure Wow, we've got a good percentage of them. So actually, now that you say that, you know, um, everyone that comes to from another area, no matter where they're coming from, whether right here in Florida or wherever, they always ask the school grade. Can you give me a little more information about like how yeah. does that even get gauged or so, if it's accurate? Um, it's not always the most accurate, but it is one indicator of a school's success, but you also have to look at some other factors. Um, so school grades are determined by ELA and math testing, okay. statewide testing, mm -hmm. um, with a little bit of influence from science and civics, um, but those are only taken in one grade. Okay. So like science is an eighth grade test, civics is a seventh grade test. Okay. Um, the other ones really uh, don't, don't impact it as much. Okay. Those are local assessments. 
Um, so currently we just started a brand new test two okay. years ago. This is our second year with the FAST testing. Oh yeah, 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 my son, and I have like kids in school right now. Yeah. And he's literally in class, all, he said, mom, I'm gonna be all day long there. You have five bucks, they're bringing Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Well, he's probably testing, Yeah. because we're in our third testing window. So it's a little bit more of a performance, or progress monitoring um, assessment. So we do progress monitoring one in about August, right at the start of school. Progress monitoring two is January, February, and then progress monitoring three Got is it. now. Okay. And that's that summative that test, sense, and okay. that is what will determine grades. Okay. For now, the school. For this school, Got yeah, it. and for every school, because right. they do it, and then they compare you, and then they scale you. Okay. Um, so, but as it's a new test, we're still trying to figure out mm. where those grade bands lie. Mm -hmm. So we calculate, we think we know what our grade is, and then the state comes back and goes, oh, yeah, actually, we're going to shift that bar a little bit. Um, let's so raise let's, the bar. <laughs> so More than what you already have. Exactly. <laughs> so um, we're we're still kind of figuring out what that system means for us right now under this test. Okay. But uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the teachers and the kids. Right? It really does. It really does. One of the great things we work with our kids here, though, is how to persevere. It's just like any other day. I know what I know. I'm just showing you what I know. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. And and one of the good things that's come out of the progress monitoring, they do it a couple times a year. So by the time they get to this one. They know what they're doing. It's a testing day. I know I'm going to be in first period for the whole day, but it's <laughs> nothing to worry about because mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah. Okay, Chick fil A. Actually, we don't do Chick fil A, but we do <laughs> like an attendance incentive. They get to go out in the field and get some cone ice. Oh, that's okay. So they have yeah, fun. That's fun. Except for it's Florida, and a field day in Florida is a little hot and sweaty. <laughs> so we're going to see if we can't borrow the cafeteria for some air conditioned options. <laughs> I think the teachers would prefer that more than the I know, kids, right? I know, I do. <laughs> Field day in January, cool. Field day in May, yeah, not so much. Sounds like they need to change the date that we do field days here. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's just Florida. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, I'll be honest, that's why I live here in Florida. Oh no, same here. I don't Where like are you that from? cold stuff. I have born and bred Florida. Oh okay. okay. Um, but I travel and uh, I see, swear every time I go north of about Georgia, I'm like, nope. Oh, Bye. Yeah. I'm coming home. Oh yeah. The oh, first yeah. time the the temp dips below about thirty. Yep. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> so then, um. Extracurricular activities, like what do you guys have um, programs about? So, you know, sports club and music. And oh yeah. Like that. So um, we're a middle school, so a lot of our students cannot transport themselves. So we do try to embed as many opportunities into the school day as possible. But for our students who do have that transportation, where their parents can drop them off for an after-school club, we have got clubs that range from our academic side. So we have NDHS, which is National Junior Honor Society, Math Counts, Academic Team. We have some little bit more social clubs we've got a student council um, then we've just got some fun clubs like tennis and chess are they competitive do they go against other schools um, so right now we are the only school with a tennis team oh. so they play against themselves they did get invited to go play at Golden Ocala and actually gave some of those residents a run for their money cool so I was pretty impressed by my little sixth graders who's oh. like running across the court very cool it was amazing um, our chess team does compete against other schools we have four other schools we compete with um, we won the last tournament, although that's a little bit more of an independent sport. Yeah. But I like to say that Still, all yeah. the leaderboard was Howard Middle. It's a pretty good reflection. Okay. <laughs> um, our academic team has swept the district academic competition. I think we're up to like 13 in a row now. Hmm. Um, Wowzers. Yeah, we're pretty good. And uh, math counts, we also have traveled up to state math counts the last eight years and place each time so in the top half now you have to understand that's a whole statewide competition yeah, true, true, true. but top half's not bad yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll go to school from Ocala, florida right <laughs> so, definitely okay um, and then we've got some sports we do basketball volleyball track and field which is actually the season we're in right now mm -hmm. Um, you'll probably see if you were to look at our kids on campus, we've got several kids wearing the jersey because they got a track meet this evening. Okay. Um, we've got cross country, which is long distance running. We just added flag football, ooh, which was a fantastic opportunity for our kids. Um, Why do you say it was like something different? It's brand new. Okay. We've never had it before. Um, I we've been a little that many schools that have it. Yeah, yeah, we've been a little leery about anything that might be a contact sport because they're middle schoolers. Yeah. But flag football, they had so much fun. Cool. So we did a shortened season this year. Next year we're going to do a full season. 
Um, let's see, what other sports do we do here on campus? Uh, tennis and pickleball are clubs, so not really like a sports sport because we don't necessarily have someone else to compete against. Right. But we compete against ourselves and have a lot of fun yeah. doing that. Um, we have a running club. I have an anime club that meets. I have an art club. So that it fits every, all, oh, all yes. types of Whatever you want to do, we've got something for you. Um, for sure. Our art club actually just swept, there was a uh, sustainable fashions. Um, fashion show at oh, very Earth Fest, cool. and we took first, second, and fourth place of that competition. Interesting. Um, and what was that about? Dresses. So they were awesome. like, actually like, they recycled? Had to, they had to recycle all the pieces of their clothing. So like, um, one of my girls took um, like a poly tablecloths, and she ruffled them and made her dress out of that. I had another girl who recycled other clothing and repurposed it into her dress. Mm. Um, I love we, that. It gives it was them, you know, it gives each each kid, um, it like a, I guess, enriches their already potential. You know, yeah. the, what they like to do. You know what I mean? And, and that these, gives them an opportunity. And e these are skills that even if you never pursue fashion later in life, you thought about it. You yeah. designed something. You built it. You followed through. You maybe learned that hey, this didn't work out too well yeah. because I can't sew a zipper onto. Uh, a tablecloth, yeah. but you got to learn something, you got to do something, and that's yeah. a lot of what our kids do here, is they learn how to learn, how to how It's another to version of STEM, not necessarily oh, yeah. that difficult, but at the same time, you know. We love STEM, we do, but Do we, you guys do STEM here too? We do, we do. In fact, I've taken students to the State Science and Engineering Fair. Each year I've been here, and when I picked up this job, they were on like a five-year streak before that. So we're, we've got to be up to seven years in a row going up wow. to the State Science and Engineering Fair, which is amazing for a middle school student. Um, of course, not the same middle school student, because hopefully not. Yeah, <laughs> the brain would be kind of low. They're still here the for seven years. No, no, no. But um, I'm thinking about my high school um, seniors who've competed at state, and most of them I got to watch um, as a junior competing. So that was amazing. Um, so, but we really look at application. So you know, you you learn all these things, and then you go out into the real world. And what do I what do I do with oh this? Oh my god, I remember feeling that same way. <laughs> and so that's a lot of what we do here. Is well, okay, yeah. So you may not exactly use a Pythagorean theorem when you go out into the world, but you do use algebraic reasoning, if only for the logic behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a lot of what we work with our kids because right. they're middle school students. Who knows where they're going? Right. I mean, we've got doctors, we've got lawyers, we've got mechanics, we've got air conditioning technicians, we've got everyone under the sun sitting on our campus right now. We mm -hmm. just need to get them the skills so that they can go do figure out what they want to do. Yeah. They'll start out being a doctor, and next thing they know, they decided, oh, I want to be whatever, an athlete, or, you know, whatever. And that is okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Explore. Try. Um, because of our balanced schedule, I do get some learners who go, oh, no, 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 I don't like art. Well, have you tried it? Have you done it? Nope. You're going to take a semester of it, and Very we'll see cool. how you do. And I'd say majority of the time, they walk out going, okay. I'm glad I did it. I did okay. I did all right. Same thing with chorus. That's the one that I don't sing. Really? Yes, you do. Exactly. <laughs> We're just going to help fine tune that. Um, so, we do a lot of that with our kids to just make sure they leave us prepared for whatever well, round they throw. That's yeah. awesome. I do like that. I mean, um, I just feel like, you know, what you mentioned in my, when I grew up, you know, I was like, what am I going to do with geometry? Like, who, you know, what am I going to do with whatever? In I went to school in Puerto Rico, so it's a uh -huh. little different than here, but. Yeah, I mean, definitely, I'm sure lots of people have that same question growing up. Well, know? and that's one of the fantastic things about the International Baccalaureate's view. It's an international program. Like, Florida has their own opinions, and I, I work here, I love here, I live here, but the International Baccalaureate kind of helps us to get a more world view. Um, we follow some assessment criteria that allow us to give our students an educational background that would give them success in any of 32 countries around the world that recognize the International Baccalaureate. Interesting. So my That's kids awesome. can go from here, seventh grade, go to Spain, an MYP year two program, and they're looking at the same assessment criteria, wow. the same, same philosophies, the same content. Maybe not exactly like, you know, Florida's history, but the overarching conceptual understanding that 
places have rules and rules depend on civilizations. That's right. Um, so that's what we prepare our kids for. They leave us, they go, they do wonderful things. I always tell my kids, I love you, bye-bye. Oh. You're going to be going somewhere else and that's my job. Yeah. Hopefully in three years, bye. <laughs> um, as you travel, who knows where. That's um, awesome. Okay, so I, we did talk about um, academic performance and then the programs offered, class sizes and teacher to student ratio, what's that like? So the state of Florida does mandate a minimum class size of 22. Okay. So that's our bar Ooh, for we middle aim, school. I can't we imagine. aim for lower. <laughs> um, our average class size right now is about 20 in a core class. Um, those are the language arts, math, social studies, and science. And in some of our electives, they get a little bit bigger mm -hmm. simply because there's demand. Okay. Um, and it's PE or something like that where, you know, we can handle a little bit more bodies on the field. Okay. Because um, if I'm only giving you a class size of 22, good luck trying to play any sport ever. Yeah, exactly. So, except for maybe tennis. You could probably handle tennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. anything sports, else. For so, sure. so those go a little bit higher. Um, but we, we do our best to keep that ratio pretty low. And if with it, the growth of the area, how are you guys? Right now, we are actually blessed to be kind of in a happy middle zone. Okay. So we are a school of choice, which means I take my zone students. They're lucky enough. They don't even have to do an application. Here we go. They're going to Howard Middle School. Okay. Um, and then I have a large percentage of my students who apply to come here. Um, the last couple of years, uh, we've been able to accept all of our applications. Um, we have had to go to a waiting list, but due to people moving in and out, I've been able to give seats back to that waiting list. Awesome. Um, so, but we're we're not showing the boom that some parts of our county are. We're yeah. pretty stable. Okay. Um, so we do a pretty good job there. Marion County's talking about redistricting, so we will see what that does to our zone. Mm -hmm. I say it just means more people get the chance to not have to apply. Yeah. But, yeah, true. So um, definitely, but we've got some sense. room that we could grow. I do have a couple empty classrooms, but we'll get there. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, and then uh, let's see here. So, what facilities do you guys have here? Do you guys have like a baseball field? So How we don't. We have Track a field. full gym, which actually just got air conditioned. Okay. You might have seen some of the construction as you were walking in. I came from the back side. Oh, so oh, there you go. Um, so actually, you saw the other side of our construction, which uh -huh. is our repainting. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw some the guys with and hazmat suits. Oh, the water <laughs> sprayers because you have to pressure wash. You're like, oh, it's been a little bit of a construction zone around here, and that's okay. Yes, yeah. we'll take it. It's going to make us shiny and pretty again. Yes, definitely. Because um, it's Florida sun. Florida sun kills. <laughs> um, so we have a fully air conditioned gym. Um, we actually are big enough. We host a lot of the district tournaments here because we're relatively central and now we'll have air conditioning. So it's even better. Yeah. Um, we have three fields and almost a regulation size track. It was regulation size and then they had to extend our bus loop. So it got a little bit shorter, okay. which actually was a really good example of some of my kids putting their math to work out there. Oh, why Trying to figure out just how much shorter it is. Oh. Because um, they have to do, it's like three and a quarter loops instead of the three. Oh. So there's like stagger points. Oh. Um, one of my sixth grade math teams actually took their kids out there. They measured the distance. They, you know, paced it out and they compared it to what would be a regulation size track. And I'm trying to remember that they were telling me numbers are not necessarily my strong suit, but <laughs> no, they but figured it out. That's good. And they had a, a fantastic time doing it. But um, so we've got that. We've got two fields and a full tennis court. Oh, wow. um, so, but the fields are multi-purpose, so we use them for soccer, for flag football. Oh, okay. So just open green area. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay. Yep. But things can be put on basketball courts, although right now they're tetherball courts because they're doing some tetherball out there. So. Ooh. That's fun. We repurpose. Um, it says uh, reputation and community feedback, so opinions of current students and parents and things like that. So Howard Middle School has a tremendous amount of history behind it. Okay. We were originally Howard Academy. Oh. We then became Howard High and now we're Howard Middle. So Howard has some name behind it and it's wonderful. Um, we have a lot of community support and community input from that history. Awesome. Like, um, we actually just hosted a sponsor breakfast and about half the people in the room had come to Howard, although most of them had come to us when they were at a high school. Oh, wow. um, so that's, that's this a, been a small high school. school. So this building actually wasn't here. Oh. Um, so it was about half of our campus. 
was the high school. It was relatively small. And then when they became um, intermediate, they added more classroom buildings. Actually about 10 years ago, we had built this office, which is why your GPS took you into the back side that's of the school. That's right, okay. Because that, that used sense. to be the front office. Uh -huh. And then they gave us a new cafeteria and moved so to the front office. So that's the cafeteria. Yeah. Okay. And so um, they were able to kind of flex around the campus a little bit but it does mean we have some classrooms that were not designed for middle school students. And that's fantastic, because yeah. they're gigantic. Oh, like really? my robotics lab is huge. Um, it was originally, lab. it was originally like a multi-purpose room. Mm -hmm. So it's almost the size of a jet, like it's, it's big. Um, and we've divided it out. He's got some classroom space that kind of looks like a typical classroom. And then he's got all of his lab space, oh, very which cool. is little carousels and, computers and robot maps oh, and all of that. that yeah which is and like i was just talking to my art teacher she was warming up her kiln because they're about to fire some pieces a what a kiln it's what they use to fire glazes on ceramics oh okay. so her kids have made very some cool kind of ceramic structure it may have been an abstract art project or i may not be able to see the vision um but she was warming it up to start and that's something that you don't have on a lot of campuses because it's, it just takes up space it's very specialized equipment and we're lucky to have it here very cool uh, so we've got a, a lot of facilities that have they look a little bit different but they serve us and we love their flexibility i love that i wish i had robotics i always talk to my boys um one of them took stem and they did this little car that was like a solar car. Uh -huh. They had to compete and race them. Oh, yeah. It was really cool. Oh, that sounds amazing. I wish I would have had that, you know, growing up. I didn't, like I said, they didn't have those kind of programs over there. But um, so safety and security. So like, what are the safety policies, bullying prevention programs, etc. Because middle school can be kind of rough. It can be. Uh -huh. It's middle school. We all have those memories of middle school. Um, so you had to be busted in the front office. We are a pretty secure campus. Um, you may have noticed that we have gates additional all fencing over. and yes. gates. Um, because we are so close to our community, we want to make sure that, you know, we, we are still secure. Um, and so it's a pretty hard campus, but that's okay. It's it's the sign of the times. Yeah, um, exactly. We've tried to make it as aesthetically pleasing as possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's still there. Um, so we also have a very proactive uh, behavior team. Okay. So we work with our students on the learner profile. These are 10 characteristics that make for a healthy learner. So they're an acquirer, they're caring, they're principled, those are just to name a few. And those are embedded into our, our campus culture. So um, we do have regular conversations with students about are we being caring right now? Oh. Are we being principled right now? So the teachers, if they different? see something like that in the class, mm -hmm. they'll kind of bring yeah. that up. And okay. if it's going to continue beyond a classroom, then our discipline team comes in, our guidance team comes in to intervene and to um, remediate where they might need to. If we're just not getting a program, we're gonna have another conversation. Yeah, um, that's good. Because at the end of the day, I need you to grow up to be a world citizen. You can't do that if you're mean to your friends. You won't have very many friends. <laughs> so that's a lot of what we talk about. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you know, we're here to support any of our learners when they're having any, any kinds of trouble. Um, and we are out and amongst. That is probably our overarching, which is nice because we're pretty small. I get to know almost all of my kids that's coming awesome. on our campus. Right now we're right under a thousand. Oh wow, um, that's big. Oh, for Marion County, it's pretty small. Really? Um, yeah, we I, are. I'm just comparing to, I mean, I don't even know how big my son's middle school is, but. Yeah, yeah we're the third smallest. Oh wow. Um, so, but it lets us know our kids. Yeah. And we know our kids. I like, love that. I, I, know, I know who's walking past me. I know silly stories about your dog because I love to share dog oh, stories or cat stories that. or whatever because that, that lets me know who you are. Yeah. So That's really cool. And I think that's really important to mention because, um, you know, like I said, people are coming from other places mm -hmm. and that, first of all, change is hard. It's hard. And then coming in to meet friends and mm -hmm. trying to make new friends and trying to fit in. So that's really important. I'm glad that you oh, yeah. mentioned that. No, sure. we, we really make a point to get to know our kids coming onto campus. Um, we, we get to know their interests. What do they like? What do they not like? Yo, that's, that's what makes it fun. I love it. That's so cool. Um, all right. So special needs support for families with special needs children. 
I have two autistic children, mm -hmm. so how, what do you guys have here for that? Type so of Marion County uses a hub system, which means they focus support at regional locations. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the hub for ASD, Autism Spectrum yeah. Self-Contained yeah. Unit. Okay. So a lot of our friends on the spectrum who are in that unit are all possessed, so they may have extreme communication difficulties. Um, and because of that, we have uh, behavior specialists here on campus. We have at least one behavior tech, if not two. We have paras who have been very, very well trained. Paras are paraeducators who are with the teachers in those rooms. Oh, very good. Um, we also have an IND unit. IND is Intense Neurological Deficit. Oh, um, that doing? So I, you might have heard them called like uh, Educatable Mentally Handicapped. Oh, okay. um, so a lot of my friends there are, are lower IQ. Okay. We need to work on you know some of those very basic lifelong skills that they're then going to continue forward oh, to hopefully awesome. become independent. Um, so we have those, and that's that's one end of the spectrum. But we have every huge, other support yeah. from that because of that. So we're like we have behavior techs here on campus. We have behavior specialists here on campus. Interesting. We have a very active um, ESE specialist who's going to make sure that all of our students are getting what they need to be successful. Same thing, same thing with 504 plans, which are a little bit different avenue. Mm -hmm. um, so we really work on what sports do our learners need and what sports can we provide. Awesome, I love that. Yeah. Um, and then transportation, you know, what is uh, the, you know, you mentioned that you guys are, uh, what is the program called? We're, we are a magnet school, so we are a choice. We're a school of choice. choice. That's what um, so, so students coming here have to choice. come They have to their provide own. their own transportation, gotcha. yes. But for our zone students, we have walkers, bus riders, and we do have some who still choose to come by car. Okay. Um, we have a lot of walkers here because we are very close to our community. Oh, um, yeah, I did see lots of homes. Yes, yes. I have, I have a good population of students who walk. Um, I have some other friends who walk because their parents would rather pick them up in a parking lot. I disagree with that because this is a pretty busy highway for yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> but most of those learners should be car riders. But um, in our car line, we, we've got a pretty efficient car line. You probably drove through it. I, I did drive from the back yeah, side. Yep. And then um, we have seven or eight buses that then transport our students. How far do they go? Do you know how far the buses go? Um, our from? walk radius is two miles. Oh, okay, um, not the walk. Right two right. miles that way, and about a mile and a half this way, up until you get to Highway 40. Got it. You know, once students trying to cross Highway 40, that's a pretty big highway. Here we have security, or not security, uh, crossing guards. That's what I was going to ask. But, okay. yeah. Up to that two mile radius? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay, that's yeah. great. And so that really helps. I think we go all the way to, uh, you might have driven over some railroad tracks right near my Madison Street. Mm -hmm. That's the edge of our walk radius. Okay. All right. So that way, and this way it goes a little bit further back because they don't have obstacles to cross. Oh, okay. But two miles is typically the average. And then after that is bus. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep. And then um, enrollment requirements and procedures, like what does that look like? So we, um, if you are coming here as a zone student, you're just going to follow the Marion County Public Schools enrollment process, which is um, proof of address, proof of vaccinations, because we do have mandatory vaccinations for seventh grade learners, that's statewide. Why seventh grade? Um, no idea why they picked that grade, but yep, yeah, that's the that's the spot. Um, now, a question about that, actually, yeah. that you mentioned that. So what if someone doesn't want to be vaccinated? So there are some opt-out forms, okay. so you either have to show proof of vaccination or proof of opt-out. Got it, okay. But, um, and, it, and seventh is the magic year, why our state picks that's that year? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know but that it is. Um, uh, you'd also have to provide uh, transcripts, although if transcripts aren't available, we take our best guesses to the education history of your learner. Um, transcripts make our lives a lot easier, yeah. but of course those will be requested from your uh, departing school. school. Okay. And then um, if you are coming in by choice, so you are not in our address zone, what you're gonna do is we have two windows for choice. Um, the first one is our school choice window that opens every November and then closes in January. Okay. Um, and that is the main magnet application process for the entire county. Okay. Um, so Howard is but one option there. So I think it's the best option, but it's one option. And then there are other programs that kind of um, fit in that as well. Same for elementary schools, if you're doing a choice school for elementary. Okay. If I have seats available, then we open up a second window, which is open enrollment. Open oh. enrollment, because we are a choice district and we allow choice, would allow you to apply for a seat that 
has not been allocated. Oh, okay. Um, so open enrollment does not cover every school. It only covers schools that have seats available. Oh, okay. So that would depend on the year and depend on the enrollment. Okay. But so and my recommendation is to make that magnet application oh, okay. November to January got for it. the next year. Got it, got it. So okay. like this year, the magic date, I think, was like November 14th. It's normally pretty close to the beginning of November, but it always closes the end of January. Oh, okay. Because um, then we do all of the magnet draw. It is a lottery system for middle school. We don't do any kind of um, entrance criteria, um, but it is a mag it is a lottery for that magnet. So it's a it's a randomized selection. You apply, and then as many seats as they have, they pull the magic numbers, and those are the students who get offered a seat. Perfect. Um, okay. Okay. And then if there are still seats available, open enrollment opens in May. Oh, okay. So we All actually, right. I think just opened up for open enrollment, but I don't have a. I have hardly any sixth grade seats this year. I do have some seventh and eighth grade seats available for the choice program. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. wow. That's crazy. So yeah, they're just getting uh, pretty packed in here. It seems like <laughs> it's okay. We'll yeah. take it. It's more to love. But um, yeah, we're getting there. Um, so, but we're still pretty small compared to our neighboring peers. What are the other so, schools uh, sizes? Um, so Fort King, I want to say is about 1,200 students right mm -hmm. now. Osceola is about our size. Um, Liberty is huge right now. It's about, I want to say they're over, they're definitely over the 1,500 mark. They may be wow. getting close to 1,800. They're yeah, actually having to add building. some buildings, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, they might have two older sons and they went to middle school, but I guess I just never realized. I mean, my middle school was not that big. Well, it's kind of deceptive because so you, you know, you come to an event and you know, you're not really seeing all Everybody. the school. Yeah. And even if you're on campus, you know, it's a six, seven period day. So, you know, everyone's switching at different times mm -hmm. and changing and okay. Well, I really, that's all I have awesome. for questions. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate your time. Yeah. If you like any of these kind of videos, specialize in running to search for the best deal and the right home for you. So please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on all of the wonderful homes I post about every week. This is my videographer, my son, Champ Terrell. Got anything to say, buddy? Are you happy to be here? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> it's a sunny, hot day, huh? Yeah, We're sweating, it's hot out here.